Welcome to another episode of Municipal Affairs. In today's episode, we're focusing on the upcoming Saskatchewan provincial election, which is set to kick off within days, if not hours, of us recording this episode. As the election draws near, the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association has been hard at work laying the groundwork to ensure the key issues facing their communities are front and center. This summer, SUMA launched their We Are Urban campaign, celebrating the role of their member communities, from the smallest villages to the largest cities. Through billboards across the province and an active social media presence, the campaign highlights the vital services, facilities, and landmarks that make urban municipalities essential hubs for residents and surrounding areas alike. From hockey rinks and recreational facilities to schools, libraries, and clinics, urban municipalities serve far more than their immediate populations, offering resources to neighboring communities. So joining us for today's conversation is SUMA President Randy Golden, who recently sat down with us and discussed that We Are Urban campaign and shared what SUMA hopes to hear from the provincial leaders during this upcoming provincial election. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan provincial election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. <laughs> Randy, thank you so much for doing this once again. I want to just take a moment and start from before the summer, if you don't mind. Uh, prior to the summer kickoff, uh, SUMA launched their We Are Urban campaign with billboards, a social media platform campaign. Where did this campaign come from and why was it important to let residents of Saskatchewan know that we are urban? Well, thanks, Chris, and I hope you had a great summer, and I hear you uh, spent some time in Land of the Living Skies here in Saskatchewan, and and uh, as you know, uh, SUMA is the voice for our urban communities, and in Saskatchewan, we have, you know, right now, we have 463 uh, members that are urban, so, you know, we have the resort villages, I believe we have uh, 13 of those, we have many of the villages, we have 233 villages, 147 towns, 16 cities, and 16 northern municipalities, so we're scattered right across the whole province. So the We Are Urban really brought attention to what happens in our urban municipalities and it also will lead now to our provincial election um, strategy that we have because we're hearing from our members that there are so many new pressures on our, our municipalities um, and that's what we want to bring attention to. We want to bring attention to everything that goes on here, really the economic hubs, the uh, program suppliers, the service uh, suppliers, uh, but the fact is uh, we can't do this alone. You talk about how your members were really passionate about the We Are Urban campaign, but it's not just the members who are going to be voting in the provincial election. It's also the residents of these urban communities that you represent. Did you get a sense that the people of Saskatchewan were actually paying attention to the campaign as well? Well, the campaign really highlighted with our billboard program, especially, um, you know, not the big cities, uh, but the towns. Um, that, that play such an important role. And it brought pride, first of all, with our municipal um, leaders in those communities and throughout the province. The social media campaign was picked up by everyone. Um, I was hearing from people throughout the province uh, saying, yeah, this is what's happening in our community and we're so proud of it. So that will also lead into, you know, the candidates running um, in the provincial election. They're hearing about that. Uh, because it can't be just our 
um, you know, our elected officials that are talking about this. We need to have everybody talking about this and how important it is uh, that we're economic generators, but we're sustainable. So we are hours, if not days, away from this next provincial election kickoff. Premier Scott Moe, uh, NDP leader Carla Beck, and the Saskatchewan United Party, all three parties who have uh, seats in the Legislative Assembly as of uh, the dissolution, which will be coming in a few days. Um, is there a main theme that you're hoping the party leaders will address in their platforms or during the 30 days campaigns up until the October uh, vote? Well, we've identified one key uh, theme that you're going to be hearing and seeing from Suma, uh, who, uh, uh, when we're talking about our municipal members, and that's around municipal sustainability and municipal autonomy. Um, you know, we are definitely seeing the pressures around that one main theme. Then we have some underlying things that you're going to be hearing us as we talk about that one main theme, autonomy and sustainability. We're going to be looking at our revenues, our revenue streams. We're going to be looking at our responsibilities and what we're being asked to do. Um, and we know what we're being asked to do in the acts that we have. We have three acts, the Northern Act, the Municipal Act, and the Cities Act. And you can see clearly in those acts, what we're supposed to be doing. And the third underlying issue comes from that, those acts and uh, our responsibilities and the fact that there's more and more being downloaded on our municipalities. And most of those times without the funding that should come with it. So during the SUMA convention in Regina earlier this year, I had the pleasure of sitting down with about 10 of your may member mayors and members from across the province. And they were talking about, when I asked them what they're hoping to hear from, healthcare funding, uh, infrastructure funding. It all comes da down to sort of municipal revenues and, like you said, that provincial municipal responsibilities do you think you're going to hear from the party leaders or are, is SUMA going to be sitting down with the parties to address these issues one-on-one -on -one, or are you hoping that residents will address these issues when they come door knocking? How do you hope to get this message in front of the party leaders? Well, all of everything you said, Chris, because I think it's a shared responsibility. Uh, definitely we will be sitting down and we will be taking these questions um, you know, to all the parties and party leaders and candidates. So in that election platform on our website, you'll see there's the opportunity for councils and elected officials to download um, letters and, and uh, social media strategies, but it's also available uh, to the public to see those things. So if they feel that they want to write a letter or if they just want to get some information, they can because we're going to be seeing those candidates throughout our municipalities, whether they're at special events and we're seeing them already all summer long, uh, or they're holding all candidates forums, um, or you can send a letter to your editor or do some social media. So all that is available uh, for our elected officials, but also for the public. Uh, to be able to do so when there's somebody that's door knocking and we know we'll be seeing those, you know, you can ask those questions. You know, I live in uh, the city of Yorkton. What will you be doing? Um, you know, there's an, been announcements coming for the last five years. Yorkton is going to get a new healthcare facility. So why is there so much of that share being downloaded to our municipality to pick up now? When you look in our act, it says nothing about healthcare. You talk about municipal revenue, and I want to just stick on that point for a second, if you don't mind, because SUMA alongside FCM have been calling for the three levels of government to sit down at the table to address the revenue sources, because right now you you as municipalities traditionally have property taxes and grants to offset the uh, revenues that you have, or that's all yeah. you have to offset revenues. What specific item are you looking for for the provincial government to expand to allow municipalities to have more revenue sources and streams into their municipality is there a specific item you're looking at or are you just looking for them to come up with the solution to allow municipalities to have more streams 
Well, Chris, we'd love them to come up with uh, with uh, some things that they can assist us with. But you know what? We're not leaving that in their hands alone. So when um, when we uh, when we are talking with our members and when we're talking with our uh, the associations across the country, uh, we're hearing the same thing. And you outlined them. We have property tax, which has not changed since the uh, since uh, you know Queen Victoria was reigning. That came up then. The model of property taxes that we use has been there for many, many, many hundreds of years. That has to change because of costs and the, and the needs um, and the requirements that we have. So what are we asking for? We're asking for a, a general uh, take a look at how we're receiving infrastructure funding. This business where we apply, we need engineering documents, and then we're getting turned down and we've expended dollars and we're not getting anything for them. That's just not on the table anymore. We need to be very specific with the infrastructure needs we need. And, and uh, the other thing that we're seeing, it's the infrastructure, definitely. So I'm going to just give you an example for my city, the city of Yorkton, you know, 16,000 people. Our underground infrastructure, whether it's drainage or water or sewer, um, if we laid those linear assets out, it would go from here to Vagerville. That's a long ways. And that's a lot of pipes and maintenance and roads and sidewalks that we have to maintain. Um, so when we're looking at that, we need some assistance from the other orders of government and they can work together on this. Uh, and providing that. So we're asking for that, that new generation um, of infrastructure funding. That is definitely something that we need to see. And then we need to see if something is being downloaded on us, then the, the accompanying dollars should be coming with it. Because more and more we're asked to do these things and not have any of the funds that come with us. Mm -hmm sort of off topic here for a second, but it's uh, kind of what the provinces are doing to the federal government right now, because the federal government has announced an increase to asylum seekers to the provinces to house them, and the pr province is asking the federal government for more money to address them. It's similar in that vein, so what's good for the goose is good for the gander at the end of the day, right? Well, and of course, Chris, that's a great example. So those uh, those people that would be moving, well, they're moving into our communities, and they're going to re uh, require housing. And our communities, we don't build houses, but we have to supply the infrastructure, the water, the sewer for those homes that may have to be constructed or the the uh, the housing that's already there. Um, you know, they're going to, the new people are going to need recreation services. They're going to need other services that our communities have to uh, have to provide. And we want to provide that. But uh, so the, you know, the province is saying to the feds, you need to send us the money. Guess what? Everything lands in the municipal uh, areas of our country. And that's exactly what we need. So I'm going to assume that when the province gets those funds that they're asking for, they will be sending them to our municipalities. I'm optimistic. Key word there. Um, I want to talk about downloading for a second. Is there one item in particularly that you want the province to re-upload? Because w again, at SUMA, when I was talking to members, they were talking about things that have been traditionally in the provincial purview, but have been sort of taken, been taken over by the municipalities, whether that be the uh, province passing them along or the municipalities just needing to address them because the province isn't doing it. Is there anything that particularly that you're looking for the province or the candidates or the parties to address to say, we will take this back from the municipalities to address it ourselves? Well, and you know, Chris, it's not just one thing. It's a combination of things, but I know that when you were in Saskatchewan, you heard from our our municipalities, our members, the 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 concern that we have around mental health and addictions. Um, this is certainly not in the purview of municipalities. We do not have the funds. We do not have the expertise. But more and more, this is happening in our communities, and we're seeing it experienced right across the province. Does not matter where you are or the size of your community. Um, and, um, you know, the, the provincial government is definitely, they're working hard on recovery and treatment beds, but there's so much more. And now I am hearing from so many of our community leaders that, you know, we're, we're just being exasperated. We can't handle this and we know that we're being asked by our citizens to please do something about it so that is the the one thing that i think uh we need to have 
more prominent, more discussions around and uh, sitting down and which we do, Chris, we, we're having those discussions, uh, but it has to continue and we need um, all our citizens and all our residents to talk about this to the candidates. I want to turn to the municipal election that is coming up here in a few months as well, because Saskatchewan had to still polls twice in less than a month period, once in October for provincially, once in November for municipally. Um, you're seeing a lot more municipal leaders sort of call it quits. I, I'm not trying to put it uh, point blank, but I'm going to put it point blank. They're saying, I'm done. After a few years, I'm moving on to my next adventure. Do you have concerns that the turnover rate this year is going to be high and municipalities will be kind of on an uneven level playing field, trying to catch up of what they've been doing up until this election? Well, uh, we know that, first of all, our election has been pushed to November 13th. We're concerned about that, quite frankly. Um, I know you live in Alberta, but have roots in Saskatchewan. You know what happens uh, about that time of year. We've seen it happen at the last municipal election um, and uh, where we had to uh, go to the minister to have some of the elections postponed. Uh, they did hear us on that. Now municipalities um, have the authority to be able to postpone. But I'll tell you, you put so much work into doing a municipal election and then have to postpone it. So is that the ideal date? No, it isn't. But that's the reality. Uh, that's what we're going to the polls. And I am hearing of, uh, you know, many of our uh, municipal leaders that are are retiring, so to speak. Um, and uh, um, hopefully we're going to have a whole new crop uh, of uh, younger, maybe, or newer or experienced, but bringing their talents to the to the municipalities, because I truly believe that we have a lot of caring people in Saskatchewan uh, and they will step forward. Uh, am I concerned? I'm always concerned because I want to see the very best um, that are leading our community and, and being an optimistic person. Um, I'm hoping that that's going to happen. Um, I'm hoping that uh, when we have the next uh, uh, SUMA convention in April 2025, we'll be seeing a good mix of experienced leaders and some new leaders that can all work and to network together. So I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask the political question on the show, but I need you to take your president hat off and put your counselor hat back on for a second. Um, are we expecting to see uh, Randy Golden's name on the ballot in Yorkton this coming <laughs> municipal election? Got to ask the well, question. <laughs> you know what, Chris, even my granddaughter uh, in her summer job was getting those questions and, and I'm going to be very upfront with you. I've written the announcement that I will be seeking re-election. Um, I've I've got enthusiasm, I've got experience, and I want to continue serving uh, everybody that lives in this uh, community of Yorkton. So thank you for that. Now put it back on the president's hat for a second. Um, this is going to be a very quick election, quick in the sense that we are probably, well, less, oh, almost 40 days away from the next provincial election when people are actually going to get out and cast their ballots. What's the one thing that you hope residents go to the ballot box and think about before casting that X or that check mark beside that candidate's name from I a municipal hope, standpoint? Yeah, I would really hope that everybody does their research um, and takes a look at what their community needs and then has good conversation with the candidates. And uh, when you go into that uh, polling booth uh, across this province, you feel confident that you're voting for the person that has the best interests of your community and is going to be willing to work with, with, our, with our municipalities uh, to really make it the best place to live, Chris, because that's what we all want. Well, I, I'm looking forward to crisscrossing Saskatchewan over the next yeah. 40 days, meeting with member mayors, councillors to talk about the issues uh, as we head into the provincial election. So, Randy, much appreciated. And I look forward to seeing you on the road in Saskatchewan, the land of the living skies this month. Yes, always good to chat with you, Chris. Take care. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. If you haven't already, head over to our YouTube channel. If you're not watching this on YouTube and if you're listening to this via audio streams, head over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Because on election night in Saskatchewan, we will be broadcasting live from Regina 
the headquarters of the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association. We will be there all night covering all the races and having in-depth discussions with municipal leaders from across the great province of Saskatchewan. So until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and we'll see you here.